Hi, I'm Mike Crowley and today at Fluid Mechanics I'm going to show you how to build a hydraulic model in Simulation X. Simulation X is a system modeling program based on the Modelica language. Simulation X allows you to model complex um, physical domains such as hydraulics, mechanics, electrical, etc. In today's video I will make and run a model in Simulation X to simulate a hydraulic power pack moving a cylinder in and out under load. I'll show you this shortly at Fluid Mechanics. Okay, so this um, is the Simulation X modeling environment. Along here we have the libraries for various components. Um, we got signals, mechanics, hydraulics, electrics, um, and we've also at the bottom here got the standard Medelica um, libraries. These ones are provided by the Medelica Association. These libraries up here are proprietary from Simulation X, and it's the Simulation X libraries I'm going to be using today for this for this demonstration. So we're going to need a tank. This is a source of hydraulic fluid for our system. And so we go down to the sort of basic elements within the hydrant tank. We're going to need a hydraulic pump. So um, we go down and I'm going to click on a variable displacement pump. Um, a constant displacement, variable displacement. Right, so that's the one we want. Variable displacement pump. And we'll connect that pump to the tank. Okay, and we're going to use a cylinder, so I'm going to just use a standard double acting cylinder. And that's the wrong one, that's a through rod cylinder. Um, differential cylinder, it's that one there we want. And the ports are at the bottom down there, you see the little connections there and they can connect up to that. But, but I'll just make it a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to mirror that, so we can go up there and we can mirror it. So the ports are at the top, and I also want it so that the cylinder connection on the other end to make it a bit easier later on when I create the model um, and so then what we'll do is we if you just click on the hydraulic port the green ones all you connect it over to there and then basically from the other end of the cylinder we want it to go to there now you notice on the pump there are these connections here these this is the rotational input connection okay what you find on there is is different um, physical quantities can't be connected, so you couldn't connect a hydraulic connection like that one onto the mechanical connection, but you could connect that one. That's the drain of the pump to there. So 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 you can you can connect only to the right thing. I mean I can't that one there is a mechanical as well, but I don't think it will connect to that. And the reason for that won't connect up to it is because that's rotational input and that's a linear okay so that would connect to there sure and that one which is the earth for the cylinder can connect to the rod sure but but, but you can only connect to the right type of element okay so we need to connect a motor up to that pump to make it actually rotate um, so we go up to mechanical rotations and uh, we need to find the preset one. There we are. So that goes there. And I'll connect that up onto that one. And um, now if I double click on the parameter, it gives you the actual parameters you can you can set up. So basically we're going to go for rotational speed. And um, I'm going to set the rotational speed to, we're going to do it in revs per minute. And we just have 1,500, sort of standard motor. Okay, this is the motor. If I double click on the motor, I'll get the parameters for the motor. I'm just going to leave them as they as they're set as default, but basically you can do, set the displacement for the hydraulic pump. Um, this is set to 70. That means basically means that for every rev it will displace 70 cc's of fluid. Now it's variable displacement swash plate. So actually um, the displacement is times the actual displacement. This 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 blue line here is expecting an input signal. Um, for how much displacement the pump has. So I need to go to signal block and I'll connect there 
and what we'll do is I'll, I'll connect this signal block to then and we need to tell it how much displacement we're going to get so if you double click on there there's a function in there and I can actually just put in a value so I'm going to put in 0 0.5 so basically the displacement's 50 percent um, I think I've got everything I need to run it if I double click on the line it'll tell me what hydraulic fluid we're using we got um, HP 46 we'll just leave it like that there's various all all the sort of standard hydraulic oils and there's other fluids I mean you could put water in and all this to it obviously if I run the model with different fluids I'm going to get different type of results all depending on the fluid properties but we'll just use standard hydraulic fluid um, simulation so what we need to do is now set up a time for the model to run and what I'm going to do is set it to 20 seconds that's fine it's already set to 20 seconds okay um, before you can actually run a result, if I run the model as it is now, it would run, but it wouldn't actually um, it wouldn't actually come up with any results. So let's just um, set the results up. So what we need to get open this compound here, properties. So just in addition to the properties, along here on the tabs on the top, you can set various parameters. You need to say which output you actually want to record during the the run of the model. And I think what we really need to record is just look at the flow rate. Um, so um, pressure here so basically this is flow from B to A and we'll have that one on um, I just turn it on just as well and great okay so we've got that, that turned on now it flows flow from B to A what that means is from port B to port A now I know that the, the bottom port is port B and the top port is point at port, port A, just experience. But basically, if you go to pin labels, so I've turned all the labels off because it just gets cluttered. But if you look there, you can see port A, port B. So all of them have got labels. So so you just, but so if there's any confusion, you can turn that, turn that on and off. Um, right, so we'll run the model. And it's, um, okay, so we had an error message. Um, and I suspect it's probably just because the way I've got the model set up, it's probably got overpressurized or something like that. Um, so you look down the bottom here and you can see what the errors are. Maximal ex exceeded. So let me just, what we'll do is we'll just open this up. I suspect what I've got here is probably the flow going the wrong way or overpressurized, but we'll, we'll soon correct, correct that problem. Um, so the results here are coming off on, on, the, um, on the right hand side. So I've got two screens here, by the way. So so the results are are on the other screen. So I'm having to drag them across to show you. Um, right. So the flow is increasing. That's great. And now let's just look at um, the right. So I didn't turn on the results for the pressure. Okay. But if I click on the line, it tells you what the pressure was just at the end of the thing. It says if you look down here, it says the pressure is um, 5,000 bar. So basically it's, it's just over pressurizing and that's why it's failing. Um, so, and that's basically because the cylinder's at the end of the stroke. So um, that's not surprising, it failed. Um, if I just disconnect that pipeline there and I connect that one to the other end, basically I think it's because the cylinder's starting off with the and let's see what happens now. We just change the ports around. So we've got the same issue. Yeah, okay. So if I double click on the cylinder, geometry. So it's only got a maximum stroke of two. Um, I'm going to set that to a thousand. Sorry, 200 millimeters, by the way. So I'll set that to a 1,000. It's not a problem. So unfortunately, it's not going to quite work the way I've got it now. And this is the sort of thing you normally get in. And, 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 and it's just basically because it's, it's, the pump is working against the dead stop. So we're going to need to change the, the control on the pump a little bit to regulate the pressure. So I'm just going to... Actually, what I'll do first of all is put a little accumulator on there. And that will help quite a lot, I think. Accessories, that's where it is. I'm sure. Accumulator. So I just connect that up onto there. So, and if we look at the 
I should just turn the I'm gonna turn the pressure on there. Results. And let's just have a quick look at what's happening to the pressure. Basically it's just shooting up, which is what you'd expect. So we just need to sort that out. It shouldn't it won't take me long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a bit of a control function on that pump to get that right. So I'll wind that back. And what I'll do is I'll put a pressure sensor on there. So this is going to monitor the pressure from the actual device here. And we're going to use that to control um, this. So I'm going to change the functionality now a bit. So I'm going to connect, basically, this pressure sensor is going to go into this block here, that function block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a little bit of Modelica code. So I want to set it to 250 bar, the pressure. I want to try and control it around about that, that pressure. So what I do is go self. So basically what this is doing is, this is Modelica, and it's, it's picking up the input self x, basically. Um, self x so that's the pressure and if I take off that 250 e to the 5 so that's that's 250 bar so so that's 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 where I want it to control so I look at the difference between what the pressure is and 250 bar and um, I'm going to divide that by so basically I want to control it over 50 bar so so or 10 bar even so if I say divide that by 10 e to the 5, so that's 10, 10 bar. So effectively, if the um, if self, and actually I've got it the wrong way around, so, so it's two, 250 e to the 5 minus that self. So basically, if, if self is greater than 250 Bar, I'm going to get negative out of there. So if it's 10 bar over, divided that, I'm going to get minus 1. So in other words, when the pressure's high, I'm going to get a negative number out of there. And when the pressure's low, I'm going to get a positive number out of there. Okay, and that's going to give me my output. Now I need to bound that because basically I want it to sort of limit it between um, 1 and minus 1. With these pumps, you can actually operate backwards. So in other words, you can put num negative numbers into it. So I'm just going to use another signal block to just... Um, so we get this limitation function and we put that in there. And I'll take that from there. And I'm going to put that onto there. Limit. And it's already set up right. So basically it's minus one to plus one. So effectively, whatever you get out of there, it's going to limit it in the range of plus one to minus one. And what happens now when we run it? Hopefully it might work a bit better. Okay, so it runs through to the 20 seconds. And so if we now look at what the pressure is, results, pressure. And I just click bring that across and you can see actually the pressure builds up and it just oscillates around and, and smooths out. And, and sort of when we get to there, it's at around about the 250 bar, which is, which is what we set it to. Okay, so that, that's working okay now. Okay, so I think what we need to actually what we haven't done with the cylinder is connected anything to the end of it mechanical so before for it to work mechanically you actually have to have something connected to it so I'll just put a mass towards the end of that piston that's set up to one kilogram I'm just going to increase that to a thousand kilograms I'll just wind that back again and we'll run the model hopefully now it should give me the results I want and so, so actually now it is moving. Okay, so that was why it wasn't moving. You, if you don't set the parameters up, um, it, 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 it just won't run. That's, that's the way it is. Now, what I could have done is actually look down here, but, but, but I was just taking a shortcut and not, not, not uh, reading what, what, what the error was. Okay, so we got that going. So, so effectively, we've now got a piston going in one direction and we've got the pressure control. But what I want to do now is get this piston to go backwards and forwards in a controlled way rather than just, just extending. That, the way it's shown at the moment is not much good to anybody as a real system. So what we'll do now is I'll put a control valve on that hydraulic cylinder. So we just need to go down now to um, within the hydraulics and find a valve. 
directional proportional directional control valves. I think the valve we want is uh, this one here. Four two, yeah, is that it? Yeah, that's the one. So we'll just move that down a bit, and we're going to put that valve in there. So um, what I'll do is I'll connect that port there onto that one, and I'll connect that port there onto. Actually, I've done it the wrong way around. Because what you're supposed to do is obviously in a valve that that's pressure and tank, and that's A and B. So I'll just um, I'll just mirror that so that it comes up the other way. Um, if I mirror it again, I would just leave it like that. I know. So, so so it's up. Unfortunately, the 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 letters are upside down, but it just makes it easier to um, connect it. It's not ideal, but there you are. So pressure tank. Um, and I connect up A and B connections. Okay, so we've now got a, a control valve and we need to actuate that. Uh, so, um, so, so what I'm going to add is this control block. If I can find it. Um, yeah, two point function. Yes, this is the correct one. So what this this will do is we will look at the um, cylinder's displacement, and when it gets to eight hundred millimeters, we'll stop it and move it in the opposite direction. When it gets back to two hundred millimeters, we'll 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 switch switch it again because the stroke of the cylinder we set up to be a thousand, so that's the maximum stroke. So. How does this? So we open up that component. So this is this two-point function, and we're going to have switching points, and we're going to say this first switching point is at point two. That's point two meters. When you when you're in these forms, you have to work in SI units, and the other one is point eight. And basically, at one point, it's going to go. The output from this function is going to be either minus one or one. When it's one, it'll move the valve one way and then when it's uh, minus one it'll be fully the other way if the output was zero it would be in the middle position now when we do this function um, I'm not quite sure if it's going to quite work because it might move it in the wrong direction but but that's easy to swap around in a few minutes we'll just test it but you need to put an input to this function it needs to actually know what the input is so how do we get the um, displacement from that cylinder into that function so all these components have a name. This is cylinder one. I'm just going to check. You can change these names to to whatever you like. I'm going to just put that to cylinder one. Okay. And um, we can then call that cylinder one um, as an object and actually get within, within basically everything that you see properties over the properties, everything you see with the results here, they've all got a, a name associated with it. You can actually reference those names and, and so what I'm going to get to is the actual position which is that one there. So we can actually get the position out of that function into another function. So I'll put this block, I'll put this block in here. Okay. And we need to put a little bit of code into there to call up that function. So what we do is we type cylinder some capital cylinder one and I put dot, this is a Medallica object orientated. And then the moment I put that in, it came up with all the options that are available. And down here, we got piston stroke, which is the one we want. So we click on that. So that's in there. So now that's going to output the piston stroke. There's no connection between the cylinder and that, but it's actually looking at it. And I'll connect that up to there. And that's taking the input to that. So let's see now what happens so um, let's run the run the model I'll actually get up stroke there and let's say the so we've got nothing at the moment because there's no, no results and I'll run it and you'll, you can see what's happening as it's running okay so it, it just went down to the bottom and stopped uh, basically hit the, hit the um, end stop on the cylinder and it hasn't worked so um, I'll rewind and we just go back into this function here and we just change those rounds. So we'll change that to one 
I'll change that to minus one. Now it should just switch it around the other way. It should hopefully work now. Yeah. So there we go. So now it's going backwards and forwards nicely. Um, we can look at, you know, the, the great thing about this simulation X is you can you can look at all the results. So we've got, you can look at everything that's happening and analyze it in, in great detail. Find out what you're interested in, size of the components. Um, I'll just put on the um, cylinder force there. Actually, what I'll also do to this model is we can, we've just got a mass there. That That's not realistic. We'll, we'll, we'll put in um, some friction and uh, some mechanical um just put a friction component in there and i'm going to put in continuous friction i'll just have a thousand newtons in there and we just connect that basically to the end of the cylinder okay um we could actually work out if we want to do how much energy we're losing due to friction we could put that in there i'm sure there's a Right, power loss, there we are. So now, results, cylinder force. So there's the cylinder forces associated with that. We can look at the hydraulic pressure going up and down, okay. We can look at basically anything you want to look at. You can look at, um, I haven't got the results turned on for that. All right. No, but we could look at the displacement. I'll put that on. Let's just run it again. So that's the actual displacement value going up and down. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So on my website blog, I can provide, um, I'll provide a link to Simulation X website, um, also to the Medelica Association. There are other uh, Medelica based um, modeling programs. Actually, the one that might be of interest to you is Open Medelica. It's a free version which you can download. The, the problem with Medelica, the Open Medelica though, is it doesn't have the same libraries. So within Simulation X, they got some really nice libraries which made this really easy to do. But within Simulation X, they have the free libraries as well. And this is the Medelica Standard Association. And when it, within there, there are hydraulics and similar type of um, libraries. So, so you could possibly create something like this. I've never actually tried to do it, but, but I'm sure it's possible. If you have any questions on this um, video um, of a general nature, then then please um, leave your questions on my website blog and I'll endeavour to answer them then. I can't sort of get into email correspondence about this. But if you need any help um, on um, design of um, hydraulic systems on a consultancy type basis, well, well then please um, contact me directly. My contact details are again on my website. Well, that's it today from Fluid Mechanics. Thank you very much for listening.